McGee and Molly. Starring Bob Sweeney as Fibber. And Kathy Lewis as Molly. Hi, McGee. Hi, all right. Expecting trouble? <laughs> Haven't you heard about the ladies' campaign to beautify Wistful Vista? That's all I've heard. Molly's chairman of the committee. Yeah, well, Major Thorndike donated this monstrosity for the courthouse lawn. Hazel asked me to clean it up. Well, it's quite a relic. Well, it's got an interesting history. This baby is credited with blowing up a Confederate ammunition train. Hmm. Sort of a hero, huh? Not really. It was a Confederate cannon. <laughs> hey, I got another brush. Do you want to paint that wheel? No, no. I've got a lot of work to do down at the building. Uh, uh, Charlie Pritchard's lease is up tomorrow, and I've got to make all the repairs I've been promising him all year long. <laughs> McGee! Huh? While you're down talking to Charlie, would you ask him to do something about the front of his hardware store? What's the matter with it? Oh, honey, that open front looks terrible. Charlie likes an open front. He says it gives the place atmosphere. It does. It looks like a Persian pawn shop. <laughs> I know, honey. But Charlie's lease is up tomorrow, and there's nothing as unsightly as a vacant store. I saw him looking at a place across the street yesterday. You did? Hmm. Better get down there before Charlie stops looking and starts moving. <laughs> Morning, Charlie. Well, look who's here. Now, don't tell me another year has passed already. What's that, Charlie? <laughs> I see you're in your work clothes. That's a rare but welcome sight. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking about you this morning. I said to Molly, I said, gosh, I've got to go over and see my favorite tenant and see if there's anything he wants taken care of. <laughs> That is a coincidence, because your favorite tenant's been thinking exactly the same thing. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I made up a small list of a few minor things I'd like to have done. Anything you want, Charlie. I uh, have a list right here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, say that is... Oh, that is a list you got there, Charlie. Oh, goodness sake, that would take me almost a week to take care of all of those things. See how many items you got uh, there? You know, I was looking at a vacant store just across the street there. And I'll get right on this. Yes, sir. Now, what is the first item we have here now? Let's see. Oh, I just love this time of year when my lease is up. No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me it's time to sign the lease again. <laughs> we go through this every time. Whenever you walk in here with a paintbrush in your hand, I know another year has passed. Just like the swallows returning to Capistrano. <laughs> McGee, I'm paying you $75 a month rent for this place, and I am not going to sign that new lease until everything on this list is taken care of. Charlie, just like I have said before, anything you want. You better get started on that awning first. I'm going out after a cup of coffee. I'll take care of that right away. You go ahead and I'll look after the store. Good. If you look at it long enough, maybe you'll realize what a dump you own. <laughs> I like you. Stop that pounding. I've got a man up here with a migraine headache. Oh, I'm sorry, Doc. Who is it? Me! <laughs> I'll try to be careful, Doc. And while you're here, McGee, I've got a few things in the office I'd like fixed. Uh, when is your lease up? First of October. See you the last of September. <laughs> Do you know where I could find the owner of this place? 
What did you want to see him about? I'm looking for space. They told me at the real estate office that the man who runs the store is thinking of moving. Oh? Are you sure they meant this store? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It fits the description. And it would suit my purpose fine. Well, maybe your purpose will suit my purpose, too. You say you're interested in renting space, huh? Yes, that's my card. Hmm? Roscoe Galleries. Well, very nice to know you, Mr. Galleries. The name is Roscoe. Fenton Roscoe. Galleries are my business. Oh, boy. <laughs> However, uh, there's nothing I can promise you right now. I'm willing to pay $90 a month. Well, uh... Like I say, there's nothing I can promise you except that you could move in tomorrow. <laughs> Wonderful. Naturally, you'll require a lease. Why don't you uh, drop around to my house tonight and we can settle this whole thing? Splendid. Now, are there any uh, improvements or alterations you'd like me to make around here? Oh, no, 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 no. This is perfect. Please, don't touch a thing. Of course, you will remove all this um, stuff. Huh? Oh, oh, naturally, naturally. Mr. Roscoe? I think you and I are going to get along beautifully. Well, I certainly hope so, Mr. McGee. Yes. Uh, the address is 79 Wistful Vista. And uh, make it any time this evening. I'll be there at 8 o'clock. Fine. You seeing you? Yes. <laughs> Just what do you think you're doing, McGee? Weighing my cards. <laughs> Well, you'd better get to work on that list. While you were gone, I rented the store to someone else. You what? Now, McGee. Charlie. <clears throat> Goodbye sort of choked me up. So why don't we just say... Aloha. <laughs> That's right, Edna. He'll be moving in sometime this week. Yeah, it is wonderful. Hmm? Oh, oh we'll, we'll get started on that tomorrow. All right. Goodbye. Oh, McGee, the girls are so thrilled about Mr. Roscoe and his gallery. So am I. He didn't want any changes made. <laughs> no windows, no doors, no nothing. You know, I guess it's going to be one of those um, sidewalk art galleries, huh? Well, they have a lot of them in Paris. Yeah. Maybe I'll be responsible for bringing a touch of Paris to Wistful Vista. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I can only get Nate to do something about the front of his delicatessen. What's the matter with it? Well, he's got those awful salamis hanging in the window. Not only that, he spells his name with them. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll get it. Hi, Roy. Hi, McGee. Lease hall set? Oh, got it right here. <laughs> Hello, Molly. Hello, Roy. You got everything in there I want? Oh, yes. <laughs> this is an airtight seven-year lease. Oh, McGee, aren't you overdoing things a bit? Look, I'm not going through the same thing I went through with Charlie Pritchard. When Roscoe signs this, he's in there for seven years. Doesn't he get anything off for good behavior? <laughs> Honey, I'm simply taking advantage of a good thing, right, Roy? Oh, when opportunity knocks, you've got to open the door. Yeah, but you don't have to lock it in the house for seven years. <laughs> oh, there he is now. Uh, uh, come right in. I'd, uh, I'd like you to meet my wife. Uh, Molly, th th this is Mr. Roscoe. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Roscoe? And uh, th th this is Mr. Norris, our next-door neighbor. How are you? And welcome to Wistful Vista, Mr. Roscoe. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to a long and profitable stay. Well, I hope it'll be profitable. I know it'll be long. <laughs> yes, well, I should be getting back to the house. <laughs> Excuse me, Molly. Uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Roscoe. My pleasure. Good night, Roy. I, uh, I have the lease already right here, Mr. Roscoe. Fine. It's the usual form, I suppose. Uh, yes, uh, for the usual seven years. Uh, just uh, come right over here and sit down. I had my lawyer draw this up. I, I'm really not too familiar with this sort of thing. I, 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 I believe that, that, that you just sign right in here someplace there, yes, sir. Dear, hmm? dear, maybe Mr. Roscoe would like to read it first. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I fancy myself to be a fairly good judge of human nature. I took just one look at Mr. McGee, and I knew what he was. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, sign this one right here, too. You know, Mr. Roscoe, yours will be the only gallery in Wistful Vista. I know. That's why I chose it. I expect to do very well here. 
Well, it's, it's not a big city, you know, and a lot will depend on your prices. Well, my prices are exactly the same as those of the other galleries. Six shots for 25 cents. Well, certainly that's... <laughs> Six shots for 25 cents? <laughs> Mr. Roscoe, what kind of a gallery do you have? A shooting gallery. <laughs> a shooting gallery? Well, I, 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 I thought you said it was an art gallery. I never said any such thing. My card plainly stated Roscoe Galleries. But, but, uh, but your, your card didn't plainly say Roscoe Shooting Galleries. Oh, I... I, I'm afraid that there's been a slight misunderstanding here. Uh, I'm afraid we'll just have to call the whole thing off. You mean uh, tear up the lease? Is, is that it? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I'm afraid so. Uh, you see, I, I, I thought you ran an art gallery, and here it turns out you're running a shooting gallery. <laughs> Wouldn't my other tenants love that, huh? <laughs> Especially with the seven-year lease. Oh, that will just put me right out of business. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I, uh... I'll tell you what, uh, now that'll just take care of my copy, and I want to apologize to you, sir, for causing you all... Uh, you're not tearing up your copy. <laughs> Would you like me to get you a wastebasket? Dear, hmm? I think Mr. Roscoe intends to keep his lease. Right? You're so right, Mrs. McGee. Uh, but, but, uh, but, Mr. Roscoe, uh, my other tenants w wouldn't stand for a shooting gallery. They just move out. But I'm a reasonable man, McGee. I don't want to cause you any trouble. I don't want your tenants to move, and I don't want you to suffer financially. Well, good. I I'm glad we both don't want the same thing. <laughs> but I have uh, gone to a certain amount of expense, so I'll tell you what I'll do. You give me $300, and I'll tear up the lease. Hmm? What? Pay the man the $250, dear. 275 <laughs> Wait a minute here, Roscoe. What sort of a game are you playing? Pay the man the $250. Uh, for 260 wasn't it? I wouldn't pay you a nickel. I'm wise to guys like you, Roscoe. You're nothing but a crook. <laughs> I took a look at this lease. I wouldn't exactly call you Honest Abe. Well, McGee, you've heard my offer. Take it or leave it. You can't bluff me. Well, he can bluff me, dear. Pay the man the $225. 250 are you kidding, honey? He hasn't got any shooting gallery. This is nothing but a big racket. I'm ready to move in tomorrow. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, go ahead. We'll move in tomorrow. I'm anxious to see your shooting gallery. Believe me, I'm real anxious to see it. <laughs> Well, McGee, there it is. I'd have sworn he was bluffing. What am I going to do now? I don't know about you, but I'm going to dye my hair black and get out of town. Well, hi, McGee. Ah, I must say, this does give your building a lot of class. Yes. A little touch of Paris in Wistful Vista. More like a touch of Dodge City. <laughs> Well, all finished, boys? Here. Here's another 50 cents. Buy yourself some more arms. And another 12 shot for me, Mr. Roscoe. Now, Pritchett, wait a minute. Pritchett, hold it. Pritchett, hold on. Hold on there, Pritchett. Wait a minute. Mrs. McGee, would you care to try a few shots? Now, look, Roscoe, you don't close this place in... What's that you say? I can't hear you, McGee. Good morning, McGee. <laughs> oh. Hi, Doc. I, uh, I suppose you know about our little problem here. Oh, I'm vaguely aware of it. Good morning, Howard. Sick, thanks. <laughs> McGee, I'm not very happy about this. Well, uh, I know how you feel, Doc. That's very considerate of you. Well, it, it, it's just that I've only... Do you know this artillery range is right under my window? Now, take it this easy, This morning, Doc. a woman brought her husband in with a broken leg. I took him inside the office. She heard a gunshot and fainted. <laughs> Doc, look. Just leave everything to me. Either this shooting gallery moves or I do. Hold everything. All right, Roscoe. I'll give you the hundred and fifty dollars you want to tear up the lease. A hundred and fifty? That was before you called my bluff. I've gone to a lot of trouble here. The price is now five hundred dollars. <laughs> five hundred dollars? Why, that's robbery. 
Pay the man the four hundred dollars, dear. Four hundred and fifty. Pay him whatever he asks, but get him out of here. Not on your life. I'd rather be shot first. This one's on me. <laughs> Honey, don't look at me. I'm buying six shots myself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> McGee, you've done it this time. You've really done it this time. Okay, we all know what I've done. Now, what are you going to do? I shouldn't do anything. I should leave that shooting gallery there as a monument to your stupidity. I don't want any monuments while I'm still alive. Which may not be for very long. McGee, I don't know that this man has violated any ordinance. Look, Lickford, then you make up one. Well, we can't have blackmailers coming into this town and pushing our citizens around. You mean pushing you around? Well, I'm a citizen. Which may not be for very long either. <laughs> you hear that? Where do you see this place? It looks even worse than it sounds. Come on. Come again, please. Would you like to try your... Oh, it's you, McGee. Yes. And the mayor of our town would like to say a few words to you. Well, 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 well. Mayor, not trivia. I've heard some very wonderful things about you, sir. Oh, really? Never mind that, Roscoe. All right, Mayor. Tell them why you're here. Uh, some wonderful things, you say? <laughs> Ever so many. All right, Latrev, tell them why you're here. I can't wait for the next election to come around. When my wife and I, and her mother and father, and her three brothers, and my parents, and my four sisters, can all vote for you. <laughs> this is a pleasure, Mr. Roscoe. All right, Latrev, tell them why you're here. Nothing personal in this, uh, Mr. Roscoe, but there are numerous complaints on my desk about the uh, noise here. Latrev, are you going to fall for that load of baloney he's handing out here? Keep out of this, McGee, will you? A man with that many votes in his pocket is a walking landslide. <laughs> Your Honor, any complaints about noise must come from crackpots or cranks. That's quite possible. <laughs> Why, this is nothing but a good, clean sport. Here, try it yourself. Well, I, I'm afraid I'm not a very good shot. I don't even know how to eat. Well, hey, a bullseye. Bullseye? Congratulations, Your Honor. You've just won yourself five dollars. <laughs> Well, I suppose you can call this uh, beginner's luck. <laughs> oh. oh, no, nonsense. I can recognize a sharpshooter when I see one. You must be an old combat man. What was your outfit in the last war? Marines? Commandos? A fire warden. <laughs> Tough outfit. Here, let's see if you can do it once more, huh? I have a feeling he can. Another gold dime. Why, congratulations, Your Honor. You've just won yourself another five dollars. But I'm afraid I'll have to put a limit on you. A sharpshooter like you could put me out of business in no time at all. You see, Mr. Mayor, there are only two eyes to this bull. You just drop around once every week, and I feel sure you'll have no trouble at all in winning yourself ten dollars every time. Well, I might just do that. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Latrive. What are you going to do about this place? McGee, there's nothing wrong with Mr. Roscoe's shooting gallery. It's a fine, clean, healthy outdoor pastime. And most important of all, it teaches our young men how to shoot which is a good contribution to national defense. Yeah, well, that ten dollars is a pretty good contribution, too. <laughs> it's been a pleasure meeting you. The pleasure is mine, Your Honor. Yeah. Ta-ta. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rock. Oh, hi, McGee. Give me a hand, will you? I've got to hitch this to the car and haul it over to the park. Okay. Any luck from you? No, he had all the luck. Yeah, it looks like you're in a real jam. Roy, I gotta get rid of that darn shooting gallery. You sure there isn't some loophole in that lease? Not a one, McGee. There's no way you can get out of it. But in the meantime, would you just get out of the way? No, I can't figure out how a smart lawyer like you could figure up a lease like that. That's the way you wanted it. Now, wait a minute. I didn't want a lease I couldn't get out of. I wanted one he couldn't get out of. <laughs> Don't touch my cannon. You'll smear the paint. Oh. <laughs> Roy, I think I got an idea. Well, count me out of it. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need your help. Look, McGee, I don't want to be involved in any of your crazy schemes. Roy, look, I need you this time. Please? All right, what's the idea and how many years can we get? <laughs> Well, good afternoon, Mr. Roscoe. Say, it looks like you've been doing quite a business here. What do you want now, McGee? Well, you know, I've been uh, thinking things over, and I've decided, since you and I are going to be landlord and tenant for a while... Seven years, to be exact. And that's a long time, Mr. Roscoe. 
I always say, if you can't beat them, join them. I always say it's better to be friends than enemies. Life is too short, I always say. I always say... Don't you ever shut up. Let bygones be bygones. You always say. No, 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 I mean this. I'm, I'm serious about this. You see, the way I figure it is this. You're here, and there's nothing I can do about it. So why don't we become friends? And just to show you that I mean business, I'm going to give you some. Let me, uh, let me have one of those guns there. Maybe I can win myself $10. Huh? It's always possible, though, of course, you can't expect a private citizen to be as good a shot as a mayor. Huh? Or a sheriff. Huh? You're quite a good shot, McGee. Yeah, I hit the back wall every time. <laughs> uh, is there anything wrong with those sights? I guess uh, you probably uh, tamper with them a little bit, huh? There's nothing wrong with those sights, McGee. Hmm. It's a funny thing, because... I can always hit any target with my own gun. But I, I, uh, I, I don't suppose that's allowed. <laughs> wouldn't make any difference to me. If you think it would help, go ahead, use your own gun. You wouldn't mind? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> <clears throat> Roy, would you bring me my gun, please? <laughs> I uh, just happen to have it with me. But that's a cannon. Yeah, and I never miss with it. But are you crazy? That would blow a hole right through the back wall. Probably will. Now, wait a minute, McGee. I'm not going to allow you to... I get... happen to be Mr. McGee's attorney, and I heard you say he can use his own gun. But that's a cannon. I think that's about it, Roy. What do you think? I'd say you're right on target. Should take out that whole section of ducks and part of the water tank. I think so. McGee, what are you trying to do to me? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of you. One way or another. You're either going to tear up that lease or I'm going to tear up your shooting gallery. <laughs> you're bluffing. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> wouldn't I? <laughs> May I? <laughs> Thanks. You're still bluffing. Of course I am, but you better stand back a little. I bet that thing isn't even loaded. You're going to find out in a couple of seconds. <laughs> All right, McGee. You win. Now, here's the lease. McGee, I said you win. McGee, you win. You win. <laughs> I knew you'd back down. You know, I know you're a kind, Roscoe. You put up a little fight. And no, well, never mind the victory speech. Uh, put that fuse out before that thing goes off. <laughs> It isn't even... <laughs> Loaded. I'm going to sue you for every cent you have. Talk to my lawyer. I'm suing him too. Before you sue anybody, the Centerville police would like to talk to you. The Centerville police? Yes, you're wanted for forgery and for attempting to bribe the mayor. What do you mean, attempting to bribe? But well, that old windbag took the $10 just like you did. Oh, but the, the mayor only took that money to you as his evidence, didn't you, Mr. Mayor? Oh, oh absolutely. That's very clever of you. Yeah, I thought so myself. If you come with me, the police will escort you out of town. Well, thank you, but it's such a lovely day, I think I'll walk. Yeah. <laughs> you fellas all right? Yeah. So. Hey, how about that Latrivia? I wonder what changed his mind. I did. I appealed to a higher authority. The governor? No, Mrs. Latrivia. <laughs> there you are, Charlie. There's your back door. Well, I would have liked it over to the left a little further. I should have mentioned that to the cannonball. <laughs> uh, never mind, McGee. Everything looks just wonderful. Especially that plate glass window. Now, that's what I call real style. It should be stylish. Have you any idea what these repairs cost me? Oh, now, McGee, let's not worry about money. The important thing is we're together again. Charlie, McGee. Oh, oh hiya, Doc. McGee, I've got a bill for you. Oh? This is a bill for your car. What do you give me this for? It cost me $60 to have a cannonball removed from the turtle bag. <laughs> $60? That's more than it cost me to have Molly's appendix removed. <laughs> you think I'm going to pay this bill for $60? $60. I don't care what $60 is. 
Hey, Molly. Yes, dear? This slantomatic is a real beauty, isn't it? Yes, it is. Singer really knows how to put a sewing machine together. Well, you can't beat good old American know-how, I always say. It's nothing like good old Singer know-how as far as I'm concerned. Do you know that Singer has been making sewing machines in America for over a hundred years now? Well, they ought to know what they're doing. Well, you've got the proof right in front of your eyes. True. You see that stitching chart on my slantomatic? Mm-hmm. And the bobbin in front of the needle? Yeah. And the slant needle, too. Mm-hmm. You don't find those things on any sewing machine but a singer. Well, you can't beat good old singer know-how. You didn't say that again. Hmm? Oh, you, you, you can't beat good okay. old singer. Huh? That's right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Fibber McGee and Molly has been brought to you by Fleischmann's, the new delicious margarine that may be better for your family because it's made from 100% corn oil. Fleischmann's margarine.